Hello everybody, welcome back to the first video of Philosophy. And Philosophy will be a video series that I'm doing where I talk about my ideas about the world and technology. If you enjoy this content, be sure to like and subscribe to me on YouTube. If you're on Odyssey, be sure to like, send a tip, and follow me. Today's topic will be how computers are becoming extensions of the human brain. As the computer began to become popular in homes, businesses, and schools, people began to realize the power of being able to quickly retrieve information. While computers' purpose started out as devices to do computations, such as math, word processing, and more, the purpose slowly shifted to information retrieval. There are many different forms of information retrieval in computers, such as web search quick results, articles, databases, encyclopedias, programs, social media, multimedia streaming, and more. Even activities such as playing video games or watching a video count as information retrieval. Many expected computers to be ways to retrieve information when needed, but as the portability of computers began to rise, so did the convenience of being able to use them at any point during your day. Sometimes we compare how a computer works to a brain because they do computations on demand, but brains can also do other things, such as retrieve information, aka your memories. Because the brain can have trouble retrieving information or doing computations, we allow computers to assist in the process. This is useful for information that our brain could have never retrieved. However, if we put too much of our brain work into a computer, it can have adverse effects, such as difficulty using the brain when you don't have a computer, and being able to have thoughts manipulated. We oftentimes have hiccups doing things in the old-fashioned way, because we have likely adapted a new form of doing things that is far easier than the latter. A good example of this is starting fires. The way that humans have made fires changed or adapted in many ways throughout time. In the old days, people would start fires with bow drills or flint and steel. Now many have switched over to using matches and lighters due to their convenience and ease of use. This causes people to forget about the bow drills and flint and steel and become dependent on new methods. If computers become the new brain just like how matches and lighters became the new bow drill and flint and steel, our minds will have a lot of difficulty doing things without them. When using a computer to do thinking for you, you're allowing an exterior source to give you information and, by extension, instructions. Say that you do a web search for information on a controversial subject. If you come across a biased source, they could control your actions by presenting you with one-sided information. This can lead to mistakes, irrational decisions, or just simply being manipulated. Electronic entertainment is a very popular thing. Many people play games or watch movies when they're bored or sometimes want to relax. There's been a trend of putting a large amount of advertisements in these entertainment sources. These advertisements can cause you to make decisions that you would have not have made if you hadn't seen it before. Furthermore, the use of closed source software and computers we use opens a whole range of mind attacks. Because you do not have the freedom to do what you want with a closed source program, you could run into issues such as addiction to features, hidden spyware, fraud, DRM, tyr tyrannical management, and more. I believe that the ever-growing theme of making computers an extension of our brain is a frightening and dangerous idea because of adverse effects like difficulty using the brain when you don't have a computer and being able to have your thoughts manipulated. We're teaching our younger generation and ourselves that it's okay to be mentally weak and easily manipulated, and I don't think that's okay.